Welcome to a discussion of winding numbers on discrete surfaces. Our starting point is the following problem. Given some curves on a surface, we would like to classify each point on the surface as being inside or outside the curve. But this problem is difficult because not all curves have an inside and outside, even if they're closed. For example, this fence forms a closed curve and the cows are confined to one region on this torus. But this fence also forms a closed curve with no gaps, and yet the cows are free to roam wherever they like. We call curves like the one on the left bounding because they bound a region, and curves like the one on the right non-bounding because they don't bound regions. But our problem is still not solved if we just throw away these non-bounding curves, because they can still combine to bound regions. Second, our problem is difficult because there are many ways to partition the input into regions. For example, you might look at this input and think to decompose the curve this way into bounding and non-bounding parts. But this decomposition is also valid, and so is this one. Beyond inside and outside, a point can also be enclosed by a curve multiple times. So more generally, we don't just want a binary inside and outside classification, but rather an integer valued function. And this function is called the winding number. Now what about broken curves where the inside and outside isn't well defined? For example, is this point inside or outside the curve? It can be hard to tell. To address all these issues, we introduce surface winding numbers, where as input, we take a collection of oriented curves, which are going to be some collection of oriented edges in a triangle mesh. And as output, we give you the winding number function defined on the surface, as well as an identification of which parts of the curve are bounding versus non-bounding. Our method handles general topology and broken curves, and our algorithm ends up boiling down to some sparse linear systems and a small linear program. Now, winding numbers have already proven to be a powerful tool for geometry processing. More broadly, people have been coming up with formulas for winding number, which is also known as solid angle, for hundreds of years. And winding number and solid angle have likewise been used in graphics for decades. However, there hasn't been a lot of work about winding number on surface domains. In the math literature, people have thought about something called turning number on surfaces, but this is a distinct quantity from winding number. Winding numbers for broken curves have found a lot of success through Poisson surface reconstruction and generalized winding number, but these methods only apply to flat domains. More recently, the Boolsurf algorithm addresses inside and outside on surface domains, but only for closed partition loops. Our method includes the best of both worlds, so we can now compute winding number for broken curves on surface domains. Now let's talk about our algorithm. So here's the basic idea of what we do. Given some completely unstructured collection of broken curves, it's really difficult to reason about them directly. So we instead turn the curves into vector fields, which are objects we do know how to decompose. And then we turn this decomposition of the vector field into a decomposition of our curve. In more detail, we start by solving a Laplace equation to get a harmonic function with jumps that roughly corresponds to the winding number in the plane. However, this doesn't give us a winding number function due to the influence of not bounding curves, so we instead look at the derivative of this function, which forms a gradient vector field. Once we've turned our curves into this vector field, we can now, we can now apply known tools and do Hodge decomposition to get the harmonic part of this vector field. We then map this vector field decomposition to a residual function that identifies the non-bounding parts of our curve. And then we solve a final Laplace equation to get our final winding number function. So in the first step, why do we consider harmonic functions with jumps? Well, in the plane, winding number is a piecewise constant function that jumps by one every time we cross the curve from the right. But this definition only applies to closed curves. So for broken curves, we have to consider the more general solid angle function. Solid angle is in turn not well defined on surface domains. So on surfaces, we have to consider the broader class of harmonic functions with jumps or jump harmonic functions for short. To that end, the starting point to our method is the jump Laplace equation. It starts with the ordinary Laplace equation to ensure our solution is harmonic, but also a condition that says our solution should jump across the curve. And third, we have a compatibility condition that ensures the derivative is continuous. This corresponds to a sparse linear system whose size is roughly equal to the number of vertices in our mesh. If we solve the jump Laplace equation, we get a jump harmonic function. And on domains of trivial topology, we can simply round this function to get integer region labels. However, if our domain has non-trivial topology, we can't simply round the jump harmonic function. If we have non-bounding curves, we end up getting spurious discontinuities that don't correspond to anything in the input. So we have to take extra steps on domains of non-trivial topology that might have non-bounding curves. 
As I mentioned earlier, we're going to start by differentiating the function. Because of the compatibility condition from our jump Laplace equation, jump harmonic functions have continuous derivatives, even though they themselves are discontinuous. Now, what does the derivative tell us? Well, we care about this derivative because it tells us about the presence of non-bounding curves. In particular, the derivative is zero if and only if our function is piecewise constant, meaning we already have a valid set of region labels. Otherwise, our derivative is a non-zero harmonic vector field, meaning we have some non-bounding curves polluting the winding number function. In general, for broken curves, the derivative is not harmonic, but will have additional non-harmonic parts. So we apply Hodge decomposition and look for the closest harmonic vector fields. Extracting the harmonic part of the gradient vector field in our case turns out to just involve a single linear solve whose size is equal to the number of faces in our mesh. Now we just have to use this decomposition of our vector field to decompose our original curves. Because we just took a derivative, this next step will involve integrating the harmonic vector field into a residual function that best describes the vector fields. And in particular, we want the discontinuity of the resulting residual function to identify the non-bounding component of the curve. This corresponds to the following optimization, which at a high level searches for the shortest completion of the curve that agrees with the harmonic vector field. And this optimization for the residual function can be solved as a linear program. Now let's see some results. In general, we find that our method is very robust to both defects in the curve and the underlying surface. For example, here's a really bad scan of a trash can that has all sorts of holes and on it is a curve with a lot of missing pieces but our method is still able to produce a good region labeling. Our method also works out of the box on highly non-manifold meshes. As an application, we can do surface painting by specifying a sparse set of boundary curves. And these curves may be broken and painted on even very noisy surfaces like this one. We can compute different Boolean operations between shapes defined by a collection of curves and the curves may be broken. If you've ever had the frustration of trying to select edges on a 3D mesh in 2D screen space, our method now allows robust region selection. Here we've selected only a sparse set of edges and even misselected a few edges, but our method can still return a good segmentation of our 3D model. Our method is also useful for flat 2D graphics. For example, let's say I want to segment this dragon using some quick, quick sketched strokes. Because something like generalized winding number treats the domain as the entire plane, its influence bleeds across the boundary of the dragon, whereas our method accounts for the boundary, so it does give us the segmentation we expect. Now let's talk about performance. On domains of trivial topology like this bunny, we only have to solve a single sparse linear system, so the runtime is only a fraction of a second. On domains of non-trivial topology like this torus, we find that accounting for non-bounding curves leads to a high level of accuracy for region classification on a benchmark. We have to solve a linear program though, which can lead to longer runtimes. On the other hand, after publishing the paper, we realized a simple way to dramatically speed up performance by about 100 times over the original linear program presented in our paper, while still preserving high accuracy on the same task. The details for this new, faster linear program are on my website. Now let's wrap up. So there's a lot of cool theory that I glossed over, but the concepts that underlie our method are those of homology and cohomology. In particular, we're able to take advantage of the duality between curves and differential one forms using jump harmonic functions to translate between the two. This is what allows us to reason about curves as vector fields. Finally, I'll end with some fun future directions. Earlier, I showed how our method can be used to segment 2D graphics, but you could also adapt your method one dimension higher to segment volumes instead. You might also use our method to deal with non-trivial topology in periodic 3D domains. Conceptually, the algorithm would be equivalent, just one dimension higher. Thank you and check out my website for code and more discussion about the project.